Welcome back to Final Trade. Let's see what we have today. An envelope in an envelope. Let's see if we can go another layer deep. We'll see if Chris Nolan packaged this. Oh no, did I actually miss everything? Oh, I got it. I got it. Unique packaging style number 647398. I believe. Wow. Look at that. That looks pack fresh. Wow. That's always so nice to see. Cards that are nearly 20 years old. Oh, that one's a little scratched. So I think this is going to be a bunch of um, rares from kind of late vintage. So Urza Saga on. I think that's what I was shopping for. I put this together. Maybe some uncommons in here. And then there's going to be a little bit of something else hidden in here. Just a small surprise. Nothing big. Still just kind of bulking up the collection, trying to pick up a lot of these that I missed. Wow. Until end of turn, players can't play cards from their graveyards, and you may play cards from other players' graveyards as though they were in your graveyard. Now that is interesting. That is pretty interesting. I wonder how useful that really is, though, because unless the other player has uh, cards you can cast with your color of mana, you can tell someone sure loved that card. It's also interesting because I was just talking to a friend today about how I can't recall any card in Magic's history that lets you put your cards into your opponent's hand, library, or graveyard. I mean, this is not that effect. This is you can play cards from their graveyard, but um, it's, it's interesting. It's kind of vaguely similar. Let's see. Man, that, that's pretty neat. Oh, look at this. Some Ice Age. Always love some Ice Age. Caribou Range. Four copies of that. Icy Prison. Hecatome. Mirage. The Sacred Mesa. Homelands. All white creatures gain planeswalk. And there we go. Chronicles. Man, there were so many silly legendary characters in Chronicles with just ridiculous casting costs. Look at this, seven mana for a 4-4. Four, four. And then he just gets some silly attribute until the next turn, one from a list. It's not worth seven mana. And then it looks like we're back to uh, late vintage here. Love that picture. Torment here. Ugh. Sacrifice him. Remove all black creatures from the game. Hmm. Not bad. And it's removed, so no protection from white to save you from it. Because it does not target. more really heavily loved guards back here. Where, oh where, there should be a couple more uh, Chronicles cards in here. 
Tap 5, untap soldiers you control. Remove target f creature from the game. But you gotta tap 5 untapped creatures? That is a lot. Just to remove something from the game. Why don't you just attack with those creatures? I don't know. Seems somebody loved this card. There's three copies of it here, and they're all pretty heavily played. Ha ha ha. Some curse racked. Poor little voodoo guy. Always getting stretched and crushed. Lord of the Pit. Can't pass up a chance to buy one of those for 20 cents. Really, really bad left to right centering. Look at that. Mana barbs. I realized I didn't own any mana barbs. Ah, Hammer of Bogarden. So this originally came out in Mirage, and it was, it was, I won't say the first, but there were very, very few cards back in those days that had this kind of buyback mechanic where you could get it back from the graveyard to your hand as an effect on the card itself. And I remember I wanted one of these so bad because I would play crappy little red burn decks and, um, the father of a friend of mine had one and I tried to buy it from him one day and he wasn't having any of it. I didn't really understand. Hey, he's an adult. He's not, he's not bribed by three or $4, but now I bought five of them for, I don't know, 25 cents each. You know, I started to realize something. Somehow I'm managing to buy many fewer blue cards than anything else. I don't really understand why. Because when I go through and I, I buy stuff like this, I just kind of look for rarity in a certain set. And then I sort by price and I just kind of, you know, buy up what I think is a decent price. So I don't know why that should predispose me to not get as many, as many blue cards. Ah, Tempest. Draw two cards, then choose and dis discard a card. I really want to make a video about all kinds of different card drawing artifacts. Because there are so many like this. The Urza's Blueprints, and the JM Day Tome, and the um, Planner Portal, and a whole bunch of others. that, that It seems like they've got a pretty good variety of them, but, you know, it's weird. You don't really see many of them get a lot of love. Just... A few, like, of course, uh, what's it, Essence Bottle, that broken thing. Who would ever think that drawing an entire hand would be overpowered? A little Ice Age card there. Here we go. Okay, look at this big ridiculous thing. Eight mana, and then you have to pay three unique colored manas during your upkeep just to keep him for a 7-7 seven, seven flying. Now, Rampage 2, that's, you know, arguably not that useful, but I remember there's there's one of these for every combination of three colors in, um, or, or three contiguous colors in Chronicles, and um, there was this kid at school who used to play a deck with all of them in there, and it was so terrible because he just had to get this monstrous amount of all these different types of lands out. And of course, he really didn't have a lot of stuff like City of Brass or Reflecting Pool or things like that that would help him. And so he was just playing tons of basic lands, just hoping to line up the right numbers of them to get out one of these things. And I don't remember it ever really working out for him. But yeah, I, I saw this and thought of that story and then decided to buy a couple because, well... Obviously, they don't fetch much of a price because they're really terrible. And just a couple other random Chronicle cards that I didn't have yet. Go on to TCG Player. Go do a sort by whatever set you're interested in. Look for some rares and uncommons. Sort it by market low to high. It's not perfect because it gives you the market price, which is some kind of running average of what the cards have been selling for, what sales have actually been consummated at recently. And so, you know, you're searching for a certain buy price, but it'll only let you sort by market price, but it'll get you in the ballpark. 
and then pick you up a big pack of these for like ten dollars fifteen dollars for a whole bunch of cards it's so much fun look how gorgeous these cards are these old things with these huge frames on them the classic look you could actually tell what color they were beautiful i love vintage magic stay tuned for more thanks